But not everything is a VEGF inhibitor. And uh, there's uh, some exciting data now uh, going back to immunotherapy, where renal cell carcinoma's roots really began, and uh, with a much more targeted approach in terms of immunotherapy, targeting uh, PD-1 and PD-1 ligand. And Brian, do you want to walk us through a little bit of some of the data that we've seen so far with uh, agents targeting this important pathway and what we can look for in the future? Sure. So, you know, the way I describe this to patients is that, you know, we started with immunotherapy, we've moved to VEGF targeted agents, and now we're sort of going back to immunotherapy, what I like to call more sophisticated immunotherapy. Um, so nivolumab is a drug that uh, blocks the PD-1 receptor. So uh, it's generally in a class of drugs called checkpoint inhibitors. So checkpoint is sort of the, the negative regulation of the immune system, the breaks that your body normally puts on any immune response, including an anti-tumor immune response. And so much like ipilimumab, which blocks CTLA-4, uh, nivolumab um, blocks PD-1 and in, es in essence removes that break. So there have been some, uh, uh, a very large phase one trial that was published in New England Journal that included uh, a, a relatively substantial subset of kidney cancer patients initially reported at last year's ASCO, I believe being updated at this year's ASCO, showing that there was clear anti-tumor activity to this drug as a single agent, which uh, is impressive in the sense that um, sometimes immunotherapy has struggled to have activity as a single agent. It was also in a reasonable percentage of patients who had some degree of tumor shrinkage or control. And that's been the other difficulty with immunotherapy is that maybe five or 10% of people respond dramatically, but the other 90 to 95 are, are left out. So that data was presented um, last year um, and that drug is being uh, really broadly developed in kidney cancer. There's a registration trial, second line versus Everolimus. There was a uh, trial of different doses in the refractory setting. There was a biomarker trial because there's been some, some work about PD-L1 expression, which is on tumor cells predicting response. Um, and there's also combination studies ongoing, including a combination with ipilimumab. Those drugs are made by the same company, BMS. And just today at ASCO, some very exciting melanoma data presented that suggested very early and dramatic tumor shrinkage from that combination in melanoma, again, being studied in renal. So I, I personally think this will be, you know, the next wave of, of paradigm shifting therapy in kidney cancer and, and uh, very exciting. Others agree, is this, uh, is this overhyped? Is, no, this, uh, is this for yeah. everybody, or do you think we're going to see sort of a subset of patients that this is most appropriate? Dan, it's not overhyped like Duke basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess the big question is whether or not this is going to be targeting a unique set of patients, uh, perhaps the primary refractory to TKI, so we're going to be able to finally have something for them, or is it going to overlap with the patients who would also re respond to TKIs? Probably it's going to be more of the latter. Uh, and then figuring out whether or not we can identify those patients um, is going to be one of our challenges. But it's pretty clear that these drugs, uh, based on these relatively early data, are resulting in what we really want, which is prolonged and substantial shrinkage of disease. You know, the agents that we have now are, are good. Um, they clearly are improving progression-free survival and overall survival. But in terms of that cure fraction and people that are really getting profound benefit, there is a possibility that we're going to have it with these agents. And I think, and I think you know, just uh, the practitioner has to be reminded um, something that they already know, and that is that that there is a small population of patients with metastatic clear cell carcinoma who are cured with an immunomodulatory approach called high dose interleukin two. The problem with that approach has always been you have to treat 100 people to find the five to seven that'll have those durable, unmaintained remissions. But when you've been in practice for as long as I have, it's nice to see those 10 and 15 and 20 year survivors off of all treatment come back to remind you that, that the immune system and kidney cancer have been married for a long time. How that will play out with the current checkpoint inhibitors is unclear, but it's very clear that our understanding of the immune system today is different than it was decades ago. The ability to deliver drugs that affect these checkpoint inhibitors is profound. And what we have to do is we have to design and ask the appropriate questions in the appropriate populations to demonstrate the true activity. And also recognize through memory that although our metric is often response rate and PFS, the challenge with IL-2 decades ago was not response rate and PFS because they were both low, but durability and the tail of the curve. So, we all want something that does everything, but again, thinking about the patient, if we could identify people who can be on that tail of the curve, 
where they have remissions that last for the rest of their lives, if that's possible, uh, gives us some insight into where the field's going. And then how to integrate that into the last decade's worth of targeted agent work is critical. So Bob, is that going to result in us having to change the way we design clinical trials? Is there a possibility that because we're maybe looking for the wrong thing, we're going to have a successful drug that's going to fail in a trial? Well, I, I, Eric, that's absolutely what we need to do. Um, and, and again, to digress for a moment, uh, IL-2's failure when it first went to the FDA and its ultimate success two years later was its failure was it didn't affect PFS and didn't have a high response rate. And two years later it went back and it showed a tail of the curve for patients that were now durable remissions. And what we have to be open to is the possibility that an immunologic approach will require a different set of endpoints in the context of clinical trial design than a traditional cytotoxic or even a traditional TKI. So those endpoints have been survival. So their survival has become the primary endpoint in some of these trials, which collecting then all this post-progression therapy is going to be challenging, especially when it's done in, in other countries. And I think where we may be, where we're going to affect cure is moving this into the adjuvant setting. I know that's a segue into an adjuvant trial that, that we'll get to discuss in a few moments, but that's where we can potentially hit the micrometastatic disease where the immune system may really be able to drive, drive cure rate. No, it's a great segue.